My name is Robert Larigo. Uh, I am a gastroenterologist. I uh, just graduated uh, fellowship from Stanford, uh, and I have a, a special interest in inflammatory bowel disease. So I'm the lead patient advocate um, at Galley. I also um, started the Blonde Bowel Battling Badass on social media platform. Um, and so I mostly talk about um, my experiences with UC. I now have a J pouch. I had my surgery in 2012. How do you think gastroenterologists and pain management physicians can work better together to more effectively treat the chronic and acute abdominal pain many IBD patients? With, especially since things like opiates can lead to unfortunate side effects like um, that can complicate IBD treatment like narcotic bowel syndrome as well as like dependency issues and things like that. I've had doctors both treat me like really underestimating pain and then I've been treated like a hospice patient mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. significant problems. Um, so how do you think that GIs and pain management doctors can work <clears throat> together because it just seems yeah. like that kind of system is not set up in our current medical system, especially where right. I'm concerned. Question of how uh, gastroenterologists can kind of better communicate with pain management uh, specialists is, is really quite individualized. So if you're an academic center like UCSF or Stanford, the, the pain management consultant would be within that center. Um, sometimes communication is a little bit easier in that setting because uh, you can always shoot uh, brief messages to different providers really easily. Um, uh, and that can be very different from uh, the community, um, in which case you know, sometimes you may refer to pain providers uh, that may not necessarily be within your small um, private group. But that doesn't mean that the care you're going to get is, is, any, uh, is any less. Um, the gastroenterologist may know the, the, the pain consultants, or they may not know them even in an academic center as well. Uh, I think what's really important, though, um, to help improve that communication um, is for both the gastroenterologist and the pain management consultants to, to set early expectations with patients. Uh, and by expectations, I mean uh, expectations as to uh, what the goals are for their, for their pain. Is the goal to uh, completely eliminate the pain, which is very difficult, if not impossible in most cases, or is the goal to reduce the pain by 50% or 75%? Um, what medications we have in our little armamentarium that we can use, and, and particularly what medications we should be avoiding. Uh, you mentioned uh, things like uh, opiates or opioids, uh, which can be particularly harmful to uh, patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Um, and, and as part of that discussion as well, it's also important to talk about the different uh, causes of pain in patients with IBD. Um, it also depends on whether you've had a surgery or not. Um, sometimes after abdominal surgery, any abdominal surgery, uh, people can develop uh, adhesions, which can kind of plug at the intestines. They can develop narrowings of the intestines itself themselves, strictures, which can also be uh, not only a result of the surgery, but can also be due to the underlying inflammatory bowel disease, particularly Crohn's disease. Um, sometimes infection can cause abdominal pain, uh, scar tissue around nerves, um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, um, and 45%, and, 45% and of patients with inflammatory bowel disease can have irritable bowel syndrome, which is a different disease entity, um, but the two can coexist. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome is associated with abdominal pain. Um, changes in, in bowel movement frequency um, and consistency. Um, and so that has its own treatment pathway as well. Um, so if you do have, bottom line is, if you do have abdominal pain, um, it's important to chat with your physician about it um, and initiate uh, the discussion about what uh, things could be causing the abdominal pain for you in particular, or what your gastroenterologist thinks. Um, I think it's, it's not unreasonable for, for patients if the pain becomes unbearable and, uh, and the different treatments um, aren't really working to request uh, an outside opinion from a pain management physician. If you're already working with a pain management physician, I understand the frustration it can be uh, when you go to them and say, oh, my gastroenterologist said this, but you're telling me this. You know, why can't you guys just communicate with each other? Uh, I, and, and you're right. In an ideal system, it really would be that easy. Um, uh, but our medical healthcare system can be flawed in a lot of ways. Uh, and I think the 
it really, because of that, it really relies a lot on, on patients being advocates for themselves, first and foremost, uh, really understanding their disease um, and, and, and uh, being able to, to kind of speak up as well so things don't get missed. So it takes a lot uh, personally to be able to continue through with that. Um, but thank you for your answer. Yeah, it's, it's really quite frustrating. Uh, I don't know if it's just unique to our medical system, uh, but, you know, if, if, if I have plumbing issues in my house uh, and I need to contact multiple plumbers, like, why do I have to know a lot about plumbing myself in order to communicate what the issue is? Why can't they just kind of work it out themselves and kind of figure it out? Um, it's unfortunately just not the system that we work with. And, and I think people with chronic diseases really suffer because of that. Um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, um, particularly for people who um, just have less healthcare literacy, for example, who don't know their way around the healthcare system because it is complicated. No one really takes the time to kind of explain all the ins and outs to you. Um, but if you're having any difficulties, uh, there are people out there who can listen, who can help point you in the right direction. It may be frustrating, it may take a little bit of time, um, but um, you know, hopefully things will, will change on a national level uh, for, for the positive.